Hello there to all of the New York Giants fans, hub watchers, YouTube subscribers, Twitter and Instagram followers. Welcome in to the offensive version of stat predictions for the 2021 New York Giants season. Now I did a similar video to this last year and I'm doing it again this year where I do only some key players on the offensive side of the ball and I'll, and I'll do the same thing for the defensive side of the ball as well because if I were to do the entire offense it's just going to take too much time that's something more reserved for the just chilling podcast or the young guns podcast and in fact we actually did some similar to this on last week episode of the young guns podcast so check that out if you haven't already but enough plugging enough of all that let's talk about the New York Giants offense for a quick second now the offense of this team was the weak one of the team last year and the Giants then went out and did the best they can to get additional weapons to help out everybody on that side of the ball, specifically a quarterback, Daniel Jones. Now, it remains to be seen whether that's going to work out, and that plays a point in this video because I'm, you know, obviously I'm going to be predicting stats of our quarterback and his weapons. But there's going to be one major asterisk on the entire video that I'm going to let be known right now, and that's the offensive line. I can't predict how the offensive line is going to play. I can't say for sure. Nobody can. But for the sake of this video, I'm just going to say they're going to be an average offensive line. That means that they're going to protect our quarterback for the most part and give us some good, you know, run blocking as well. Last year and essentially for like the second half of the decade, the Giants offensive line has consistently been bottom 10 in the league. I just want them to be at the very least average here. So anywhere from 15 or I should say from 16 to like 20, 60 to 21, I would be fine with the offensive line being ranked. And so I just had to let it be known for the sake of this video because of course it's going to affect how our players perform. With that being said, let's get to the first player on the list. That is Saquon Barkley running back for the New York Giants. A candidate for comeback player of the year, somebody that's going to definitely be competing for it, and somebody that I have high hopes for, coming off a torn ACL, a very gruesome injury, something for running backs is something you never want to see. Of course, only Adrian Peterson and more recently Dalvin Cook have been the more successful stories when coming off the ACL injury. I believe Saquon as well can be one of those successful stories. With the advancement in medical technology, you know, the recent example of Cook shows that, and of course, because Saquon is a freak of nature when it comes to his body. But he's going to be returning this season, hopefully fully healthy, and we're finally going to see a Saquon that we haven't seen in essentially two years. Speaking of two years, quick recap of his first three in the NFL. Of course, he was completely healthy in 2018, the rookie year, where he had 1,307 rushing yards, 11 touchdowns. And then in addition to that, he was a big factor in the passing game, 91 receptions for 721 receiving yards and four touchdowns. One of the only players in NFL history to get 2,000 scrimmage yards and 2,000 scrimmage yards in their rookie season. 2019, he had the high ankle sprain, but he still managed to pump out 1,003 yards with six touchdowns and was still very good in the passing game with 52 receptions for 438 yards and two touchdowns. And now I know it says officially 13 games is what he got those 1,003 yards for us, but we all remember the Jets game where he was playing and he got like one or two yards for the entire game rushing. I'm gonna go ahead and say Saquon gave us a thousand yards in anywhere from 10 to 12 games, not really 13. And of course, last year he went down literally in the second week of the season. So he only gave us 34 rushing yards and then 60 receiving yards. Now Saquon in 2021 has a lot going for him, especially if the asterisk holds true, which is the offensive line being, you know, average. Here's the thing. We now have a better receiver, a true number one receiver on the team that's going to prevent what happened last year, the entire season from happening again this year. That is opposing defenses, absolutely stacking the box and putting eight men to prevent any running back that the Giants were having out on the field from even making it past the line of scrimmage. That's not going to happen again. The simple addition of Kenny Galladay already is going to greatly help Saquon when he's preparing in the backfield. Jason Garrett in his second year with the Giants, 
I am sure is going to make some changes to his offense because he doesn't want to finish as one of the worst in the league anymore. I believe we were 29th overall out of 32 possible rankings. I doubt he wants to finish anything like that. So he's going to make some changes. He's also going to have some additional help in Freddie Kitchens, who's been promoted to a senior offensive assistant. And then we also brought in another mind from Cal college football and Mark Calloway, formerly of LSU to also help with drawing up plays. And I do believe this offense is gonna look a bit better, maybe a lot better than it did last year, but we still have to keep in mind as Jason Garrett. So we have to look at history with Garrett and how he's used his running backs. Let's use Zeke, the most recent example. Zeke from 2016 to 2019 went under Garrett, almost always had 300 rushing attempts. The only year where he didn't have that was 2017 where it was 242. Now here's the thing. As much as I think Saquon is going to be healthy and I think he's going to be 100% healthy and I think that say by week two or week three, he's going to be back to getting his full amount of snaps. I don't think he's ever going to get 300 rushing attempts. It's simply too much. He's not a bell cow back like Zeke is. So what do I think he'll get? I think he's going to kind of match his rookie year in terms of rushing attempts. I'll say 260 to 261 rushing attempts in 2021 is not that far off. There are 17 games now, and I do think he'll get those in like the last 14 of those 17 games, depending on how long the Giants plan to sit him out a little bit. And you guys might be looking at this and saying, well, for his career, 260 is a lot because it matches that rookie year. But I'll say this, we all remember Pat Shermer at times was notorious for underusing Saquon, especially in the second half of some games. So it's really not that much. And I do think this offense is still going to heavily rely on Saquon Barkley. It is still going to be, you know, an offense that relies on the run game a lot, in my opinion. And even with a run by committee, which a lot of people think the Giants might be going towards, I think we're going to use our backups a bit more. I don't think it means Saquon is going to be completely left out and he's going to go down to like 200 attempts or something. But with this number, and I'll say he'll average around 4.6 yards per carry, that gives us 1,196 yards. A little bit higher than I was expecting. I've said maybe 11 to 1,200 yards is where I could see Saquon going. And that's right in that range. Like I said, this might be a little high for some people, but I do see him getting this or at least something around this would say like eight rushing touchdowns. With the receiving stats, those are way, way hard to predict. And I do think he's still going to be involved in the receiving game. But because, like I said earlier, we do have more weapons now than his entire tenure with the Giants. So that is going to play a factor in taking away some receiving things from him. But I still think he'll get us around 459 yards with 54 targets and eight and a half yards per reception he's still going to be involved you're still going to see screens you're still going to see swings out the backfield he's still going to be you know a check down option for potentially when plays break down in the receiving game so i do think this is going to put him just above his receiving numbers for 2019 which i think in terms of receiving he's going to be right around 2019 Although not for the injury reason, just because of the fact that there's more targets to throw to now. Now let's go on to the next person on the list here. That is going to be wide receiver Kenny Galladay. One of the big free agent, if not the biggest free agent signings that the New York Giants made, formerly of the Detroit Lions. And like Saquon, let's take a look at Kenny Galladay's tenure in the NFL so far. So Galladay at age 27 is actually a young wide receiver in terms of body. He's only had four seasons in the NFL, so that's only four years of beatings, despite his age, which would suggest a bit more. But in those four seasons, 2018 and 2019 were his best, where he eclipsed 1,000 yards. They were also the only seasons where he stayed healthy for 15 of the 16 games and was a legit starter on the Detroit Lions. So in those years, he did have 119 targets, 70 receptions, 1,063 yards with five touchdowns. That's 15.2 yards per reception. And then in 19, 116 targets, 65 receptions, 1,190 yards, 11 touchdowns. That's 18.3 yards per reception and of course he went down with the injury last year in 2020 which took him out for the entire season essentially after i want to say week five but i will say this i am part of the group that thinks that he exaggerated the injury to get out of detroit i could be wrong hopefully i'm not but 29 i mean 2020 was really the only year where this man was injured now, I do think he's going to come back healthy. I do think he's going to continue to be the number one. Well, that's obvious. It's not a thing. It's I know he is going to be the number one on this team. He is going to get the most targets on this team. 
And right off the bat, I do think he's going to be a thousand yard receiver for this team. The first one since Odell. And now just like we did with Saquon, let's take a look at another player that was under Garrett. And this one is actually kind of a similar player to Galladay. They're both go up and get it guys. Kind of physical receivers, 50-50 ball type receivers. Des Bryant, while under the Dallas Cowboys and while he was the number one, was consistently either getting close to or eclipsing that thousand yard mark from 2011 to 2014. And in those seasons, he also 100 targets in those seasons. Going back to Galladay, his two most successful seasons did come when he was being not necessarily force fed but when they were giving him the ball a good amount essentially right we see when he gets plus 100 targets he gives us production now i'm not saying galde is going to be des or even prime des for that matter because prime des was putting up 13 nearly 1400 yards in a season and was you know one of the best receivers in the league top 10 top 5 potentially but what i am saying is galde is going to be daniel jones first true number one wide receiver He's going to be a guy that Daniel is going to throw to a lot. And he's going to have the same effect on Daniel Jones that another guy in Plaxico Burris had in Eli Manning. And I already spoke a little more on this in a Kenny Galladay video that I made. I'm going to link it right now to the top right corner of the screen where Plaxico was the go up and get a guy for Eli. He was the end zone threat for Eli. I expect Kenny to be the same. And also, if he is to be a legitimate threat in both the pass and run game, like I was talking earlier, then he's going to get a lot of targets. He's going to get a lot of yards. So what do I think he could achieve in 2020? Well, first of all, I think he's going to get the most targets he's ever gotten in his career. But it's just going to be by one. It's not going to be a lot. I think he's going to have 120 targets. Of those, he's going to catch 71 balls with 16 and a half yards per reception and after doing a quick bit of math that could lead out to 1171.5 yards in the season so that would be his second best season in total yards and yards per reception on his career but it does also lead out to his best catch percentage and targets in his career in terms of receiving touchdowns i'm gonna go with 11 i'm gonna match his 2019 self and say that he has 11 touchdowns on this season and this is something that i think is pretty realistic it's not like i'm saying the guy is going to absolutely surpass his own limits that he's reached before and in the categories where i do have him doing that it's not by much you know you look at the targets it's one more you look at the you know cash percentage is like 0.2 of a percent more kenny galladay could 100 come in as the giants number one receiver and get anywhere from a thousand to 1200 yards in the first season here once again, comparing him to a guy like Plaxico, very similar and also very similar situations with young quarterbacks and coming off of their former teams where people weren't sure if they're true number one or not. You know, Plaxico had 1,200 and I think like 50 yards or something like that. Kenny, I do think this is going to be really good for him. I don't have him having something crazy, you know, for example, Odell-esque numbers when Odell was in his prime because he's not that kind of receiver. He's not a yard after the catch kind of receiver he's a guy that just goes up and gets it uses his body and sometimes just bullies corners to get the ball an amazing deep threat an amazing red zone threat but not necessarily because he's gonna outrun somebody and now for the most important man not only on this Giants office but quite possibly this Giants team Daniel Jones and we all know that this is the make it or break it year for DJ um this year he has to show up he has to improve with what he's doing on the field. He needs to improve production-wise. And he has to play 16 or 17 games. Daniel has to stay healthy as well. But we definitely need to see him take a step forward in such a way that it shows he's of the caliber of a championship quarterback. Somebody that could lead a team into the playoffs and lead a team quite possibly deep towards the Super Bowl. It's unfortunate that this isn't an NFL anymore where you would give the quarterback the entirety of their rookie contract to try and do so to see them develop and you know you judge them at the end of their rookie contract or towards the end of it. We're in a league now where every single player is kind of given a three year basis. If by year three you can't do it especially for quarterbacks um, you're out and part of that has to do with the fact that more and more quarterbacks coming out of the college just develop faster but hopefully Daniel turns out to be one of those guys and takes that steps and to be fair he is given now more weapons than he's ever had before. He's given the number one wide receiver. He's given Darius Slayton, who will be a legitimate number two. Sterling Shepard, a great slot, very underrated. Hopefully, Saquon will stay healthy. And if Saquon does, 
you know, anything near to what I predict here, then Daniel is going to have a good time in the 2021 season, along with once again, the asterisk, the average offensive line. So very quickly, we're going to go over his 2020 stats where he played and started in 14 games, went five and nine. He had 448 pass attempts, 280 completions. That's 62.5 completion percentage. For 29, 43 yards, 11 touchdowns, 10 interceptions. Obviously, that touchdown interception ratio is not great. He reduced his fumbles from 18 to 11. We know a good amount of his drop passes is what led to his completion percentage being a bit low, even though it was better than his rookie year. Cough, cough, Evan Ingram, cough, cough. But Daniel did improve as the season went on during the stretch. We saw that he was reading the field better. We saw that he got more comfortable in, in the pocket. Of course, he got sacked 45 times, which was one of the most in the NFL. So despite that, he started to find a way to read the field better. And his decision making as a QB just got better as the season went on. So now we, we saw improvements in the little things. We saw improvements in more nuances of the game. This year, hopefully, we're going to see improvements in the production. And this is what I got for Daniel. I'm saying he's going to have 498 passing attempts with 380 completions. That leads to an amazing 68% completion percentage for 4,080 yards, 29 touchdowns, 10 interceptions as his passing stats. So I think this is very doable and I actually think this is probably my most realistic uh, sort of prediction slash take this entire video. I think this has the most chance of happening between um, you know Saquon stats, Kenny stats, and DJ stats. I need DJ to take a step forward, we all do. I know he can take a step forward and I think this is what that step is going to look like. I feel like a lot of people are expecting like 4,500 yards from him or something crazy like that and it's just like while I would be ecstatic to see that happen from Daniel Jones, I don't think it will. I think that's like too big of a jump. Um, I think this is a little bit more realistic, you know, him getting to that 4,000 yard mark, he's approaching that 30 touchdown threshold mark, his in, his um, completion percentage is quite high, but I think DJ has the ability to be this accurate of a quarterback, and I think with his receivers actually, you know, holding on to the ball this year, getting some nice separation, once again, those weapons are going to do him good. I think that this right here is something we could see from Daniel Jones in a Jason Garrett ran offense. And once again, a Jason Garrett ran offense, I had to go back. I took a look at guys like Tony Robo and Dak when they were under him. And they had similar numbers to this in terms of passing attempts. And I think this, once again, this completion percentage is something that DJ could have. Now, a lot of people are probably expecting more. Um, because he's a great deep ball passer that was something that's been you know retweeted reposted a lot this past offseason and DJ is a great deep ball passer he is gonna have his you know his deep attempts in there I still think he's gonna be right around the 4,000 yard mark though and then in terms of rushing I kept it um the rushing yards per attempt the same at 6.5 I feel like 60 is a good amount of uh, rushing attempts from the half that leaves him at 390 rushing yards and I'd say maybe two touchdowns maybe one is just a long run in and another one is a QB sneak or something but not too much running I love the fact that he has the ability to do so and I definitely think the Giants should utilize it once or twice during the game to catch the defense off guard but ultimately I do hope that we keep it to you know mostly him using it in a scramble situation I don't want too many designed runs because that's how he got injured in the first place with this right here I think Daniel Jones will definitely be a great candidate for most improved player of the year um if that is a I can't remember if that is an actual award the NFL does and I think you know Saquon will have a good case for comeback player of the year as well and I do think that these are attainable in our current offense with the new weapons with the you know additional coaches and whatnot and i feel like this would be good enough to potentially get us into the playoffs and we'll see if we can make a run you guys let me know what you think put your thoughts and comments down below is there anybody you want to see in particular for the defensive side of the ball hopefully i'll get one of those done soon three players and let me know your overs and unders with each of these stat predictions here that's it for now i'm out Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share. I'll catch y'all in the next one.